today I want to chat to you a little bit about role models um, in Tomb Raider and in Horizon Zero Dawn. In, for those who don't know, Horizon Zero Dawn is a, a newer release uh, from Guerrilla Games on PS4. It's a PS4 exclusive. And Tomb Raider, which has been around for over 20 years, Lara Croft is kind of synonymous with women in gaming. So uh, I just want to compare a little bit because Aloy, the redheaded lead of Horizon Zero Dawn, is, um, you know, she's a phenomenal character. I absolutely adored her. And so I want to compare Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn a little bit with. Uh, Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. Now, just to be clear, this isn't to say like one is better than the other or uh, I prefer one over the other. I mean, I do prefer one over the other, so I suppose I am saying one is better than the other. But I think it's important to point out like both are important role models and they serve unique purposes. But before I get into that, I kind of want to talk a little bit about what I'm on about when it comes to a role model. So... To me, it's it's not so much, obviously I'm raising a young woman, I'm raising a little girl. Harley, this isn't a phone call, this isn't a Skype call, this is Facebook Live. Do you think you're on the phone? Are you saying hello? Uh, for those who don't know, I'm Zoe, this is Harley. And yeah, so she, <laughs> yes. So anyway. Role models, uh, to me, it's more about showing what's important. It's more about showing what's possible. And uh, the whole idea of, um, you know, if you see an astronaut, yes, it's really cool as a woman to see a female astronaut. But even if you see a male astronaut, that still inspires you. That can still show you, like, space travel is possible. So it doesn't have to be a female uh, astronaut to inspire young girls. That said, I think also it's important to realize that female role models are good for women and for men, for girls and boys, really, is what I'm talking about in terms of role models. So if you see Lara Croft and she's kicking ass and she's solving puzzles and raiding tombs and all of that, then... It kind of shows to boys and girls that women can be strong, that they can be smart, all of that. And so while it's particularly important for girls to know that women can be smart and strong, I think it's also relevant that boys see that as well, that boys learn that women can be strong, that they can raid tombs, that they can do anything that needs doing. It's kind of my whole thing about role models, is that it's more about making sure that people know what's possible, that you know, women can solve puzzles, that women can shoot everyone. I don't know, Tomb Raider's a bit sketchy on that one, and Horizon Zero Dawn as well. But this whole idea of what is a role model, it's just to open up the idea of what is possible. And it's not necessarily about oh, only women can be role models for girls, but more just about how cool it is that women can be role models for girls and boys in gaming. So, that out of the way, I want to jump right in and talk a little bit about Tomb Raider. I mean, she, Lara Croft was the original female role model in gaming, so she's very important. Uh, and I think it's really interesting, like 20 years running, she has been the face, the name of an entire franchise, a really successful franchise. And when you talk about uh, female protagonists, you know, we, we all want to see more diversity in terms of the types of protagonists that games have. And Lara Croft was the first real woman who was the head of a franchise for 20 years, <laughs> over 20 years now. And she's an absolute badass. Like, let's just be clear about that. Lara Croft is amazing and kind of like the trailblazer in this regard. So I adore her. And even with her flaws, she's not a perfect role model, but that's okay. Uh, no one is. So what I like about Lara Croft is that she is really smart. And I think that's something that often isn't really stated enough that, you know, we talk about how she can, you know, tomb raid and jump around and climb places and shoot guns and whatever. And that's also really important. But I think the main thing that I always draw from it is that she outsmarts everyone in every game. She's the one running around and finding the treasure, finding stuff, solving puzzles, beating the men to 
the treasure. Uh, she's the one who can speak all these languages and translate stuff and figure out these ancient mysteries, uh, often better than her male counterpart. So again, it's not to say that girls have to be better than boys, but it is really important that she's smart, that it's not just that she's physically a badass, but also that she's mentally one and able to solve all these puzzles. Then we do also have the physical aspect of it. I love how fit she is and how agile she is. And, you know, especially in the, the reboot Lara Croft, I really enjoy that she has the whole bow and arrow thing going, the archery vibe. And she's not just this tough Tomb Raider. Courtney, <laughs> what are you doing? She's not just this tough Tomb Raider running around, but she has the ability to fight from afar with her bow and arrow and i don't know it makes me want to get into archery so <laughs> that's quite something i also want to touch on the sexualization of lara croft a little bit uh the newer lara croft she isn't as sexualized she isn't as you know big chested scantily clad all of that she is still sort of scantily clad and she's still you know gorgeous so it's not like they've <laughs> completely changed the character but it's not this overt sexualization that was present in the in the early tomb raiders and so i'm really appreciative of that but what i think is actually an important point to make and maybe not made often enough is like yes the sexualization of lara croft was was bad like we shouldn't have had a character that was basically boobs with a gun <laughs> raiding tombs but uh she you know she was still really smart and really a badass and i think that's something that's pretty important is to to see that you can be smart and strong and still sexy like that can be the complete package and i think it's it's quite a cool idea to say like you can be everything girls can be everything women can be everything so that's kind of the pros of Lara Croft. Obviously, there have been some downsides. Um, I haven't been very impressed with the direction psychologically that they've taken with her. You know, initially, they, in the reboots, and not to give too many spoilers or anything, but initially in the reboots, they were kind of going to give her PTSD to say, you know, her experience of, you know, people trying to kill her on an island might have upset her a little bit. And as, you know, so initially in the in the trailers and all of that, they had her in therapy and it, it looked like she was really grappling with these serious issues of PTSD. Now, then when the game actually came out, that was less so. And so I think that it's worth pointing out, it's worth noting this, like, she isn't allowed to be vulnerable, that that's seen as weakness. And I think that's a negative. I think that, you know, part of a character of any gender's strength is their ability to get help when they need it and to accept help from other people, for them to, um, you know, to accept when something has troubled them and to work through it, that that's... A sign of strength as compared to weakness and I think that was something that was underplayed are you stealing my child my love bye Harley say bye to the stream you'll come back just now so I think that's something that's worth talking about is that you know Lara Croft is the strong character she's smart and yet she's never really allowed to express her emotions and I think that that's a, a point that I'd like to see more in future Tomb Raider games is that, you know, personally, if I had someone come after me starting to shoot me and try and kill me and capturing my friends, I think I would also have a bit of PTSD and maybe need help or at least talk to my friends about it and be like, whoa, that was a really intense experience, don't you think? And cry or not cry or scream or lash out or whatever the emotional response is is fine they just kind of seem to make her shut down a bit more like obviously shutting down is also a response for some people but it just didn't really gel for me uh yeah so that's kind of the the tomb raider side of things i also find lara croft personally uh, and I know I might be an outlier on this, but I don't find her very relatable. 
like it, it feels a bit difficult to relate to a character who's really wealthy and lives in a mansion and that you know it's uh, many other aspects of her personality are relatable but that in particular it ends up being like when she's whiny or when she's upset you get that kind of poor little rich girl vibe from her and that's fine like rich people also have problems but it just makes it that Lara Croft is a bit less relatable on the contrary, I found Aloy, the protagonist from Horizon Zero Dawn, to be really much more relatable. And I think part of that is because she starts the game and goes through much of the game as an outcast. And that, you know, I think underneath it all, we can all relate to an outcast. We all feel a little bit like we're on the outside, that we're not connected to society or we're not connected to a group or whatever it might be. Um, and so I think that that aspect makes her more relatable, that, that you can relate to a character who doesn't feel like she's included or literally isn't included. And then as a result, as they move through and meet other people who go like, oh, you're a part of this group. And they're like, well, that group didn't really accept me. And there's a bit of back and forth on it. So that's something that I think makes Aloy much more relatable which then makes her a better role model because then we can all imagine being outcasts and overcoming that and kind of showing those people who, you know, just how great we are and, and all the stuff that goes along with that. So taking that forward, Aloy has a lot of the same qualities that Lara Croft does. Now, obviously, she's also the archery lady. I really need to learn archery. Like, all these games, I just want to shoot bows and arrows and all of that. So she's got the archery thing down as well. But she's also really, really smart. And I like that. She's out there to solve puzzles. And she's courageous. And she's sarcastic, which for me is always a, a bonus. And she's got a lot of similar qualities but she's also really socially awkward and oblivious which is kind of again makes her relatable but also makes us feel like we're less socially awkward and oblivious she's really nice and emotionally she's much more open than Lara Croft but I just find her to be a bit more relatable and that like people flirt with her and she doesn't notice and I even commented on it to another journal another gaming journalist like oh did you notice these and these characters hitting on her like no like, are you also oblivious? <laughs> so this is that sort of thing that I really like. Um, you know, but she is really smart. And it's not to say she's oblivious in general. It's just she hasn't had those social interactions before. And so she doesn't see them or understand them when she experiences them in the game. Um, it's also quite cool the way they've done it, that they've made her sexuality quite ambiguous. So because she doesn't respond to advances from men or women, uh, you can kind of impose on that what you will. Uh, Lara Croft also has similar sort of stuff. So men are obviously interested in her and have been for over 20 years um, in terms of the game's franchise. But in the reboot, they've left things with enough gray area that actually uh, there's quite a bit of fan fiction that she could be a lesbian and have a relationship with one of the female characters in the game. And I like that. I like that there isn't this clear cut this is the character, this is their sexuality. Because really, when they're going on adventures, why would their sexuality matter? Like, why is that even something to worry about? And I like that that's therefore alluded to in the game, but not really touched upon in the game and, and all of that. And hold on, I have a flying child. <gasps> Do you have a dressing gown, my angel? Or, um, you know, I think that's kind of the, the key difference with Aloy and and Lara is just that I found Aloy to be a lot more relatable and I found her to be um, in many ways I, it also they left it up to the, the player a lot more so as far as the emotional response goes for each of the dialogue encounters that you might have in the game uh, you could choose whether you wanted to have a sarcastic response an angry response or, or like more lovey emotional response. It didn't necessarily have to be like full on love, but just a bit more of a, a emotional response. And so really it depended on the player, whether you wanted to have a very sarcastic, um, cutting Aloy, a really angry, aggressive Aloy, or really emotional, um, affectionate Aloy. And I really liked that because also depending on the character you were talking to, you could choose. So like there was one character who was also definitely romantically interested in her. And yet if you took a more romantic stance with him, he kind of didn't get it. 
and neither did Aloy because obviously she was oblivious. But if you kind of were like, oh yeah, no, I hope you know, I understand your what you're going through, he'd be like, don't t don't coddle me. Whereas if you were sarcastic, then he liked you, and then he'd try and flirt with you. Um, I personally never did the angry Aloy, um, so I have no idea what the game is like if you play as angry Aloy. But I think it's really nice that they gave the opportunity that if you wanted to be sarcastic as her, you could be. If you wanted to be emotional, you could be. And that really gave the flexibility for me that when I felt like in a given scenario, I would have been more emotional or I would have had more of an emotional response, I could have Aloy do that. Whereas when I would have been a bit more cutting or sarcastic or questioning, again, I could do that. So that's kind of my comparison between the two characters. I don't know if any of you have any questions or curiosity or anything about that. Um, I think what it comes down to as well is like these games are also obviously not targeted for someone Harley's age, obviously. I mean, she's not even a year and a half yet, so she has no idea what's going on. But I think in general, like kids pick up on these things. So, you know, obviously I'm careful and more and more careful of what I play in front of her and what I share with her. But I have no issue if, you know, she wants to sit with me and watch me play Horizon Zero Dawn at this age and as she gets older. And I think it's important for little girls to see characters, whether they're male or female, be strong and smart and emotional. And I think that's kind of the balance is often we see male characters in games is very two-dimensional and that's one of my big issues with characters in general in games is that they end up very two-dimensional and if they're angry or sad or upset about something they lash out and that becomes the impetus for them to go on a killing spree in the game and that's kind of the, that's it what i liked with horizon zero dawn even more than tomb raider like tomb raider she's i, I never really understand like kind of she's trying to have, deal with her daddy issues kind of she's trying to deal with looking for treasure and raiding tombs and finding stuff and figuring out lost secrets, which is cool. But it, I never really get her motivation. Whereas with Aloy, she had definite mommy issues. There is no doubt she had definite mommy issues and she had to go and figure out who her real mother was and where she came from. And I think that's also something that rings more true for me in terms of everyone has issues with both parents. Like let's not, let's not quibble on that. But as a woman, it's really nice to see mommy issues dealt with as compared to daddy issues for a woman. Because it's so cliche in my eyes to have a character with dad a woman with daddy issues, whereas a woman with mommy issues seems a bit more unusual or unique, or at least it's dealt with a bit less in gaming. But across men and women in general in gaming, you just don't have vulnerability, you don't have emotional responses, except as an impetus to go kill all the things. And so I really like that in um, in Horizon Zero Dawn, she's got the emotional response as an impetus, and also the questioning about where she where she comes from, who she is, what happened in the world, about the past, all the quests and all the missions and all the storyline really seems to tie together and make sense to me. So that's what I like personally more about Horizon Zero Dawn, and thus about the character of Aloy. Um, it also helps that Aloy is supported by some really interesting characters in the world. So, you know, she's got characters in each region and each area of the game who are different and unique and have uh, different kinds of problems, but also different motivations. And you really can understand her world feels more real to me. Whereas in Tomb Raider, it ends up being like, you know, the people who are nice to her and her friends and old family friends and then everybody who's going to betray her because everyone is going to betray her. And it just feels a bit more, um, I don't know, it just doesn't ring true for me. So personally, I like Aloy as a role model. Again, these aren't necessarily for all ages. So, you know, if you are very much aware of age ratings, and I do encourage everybody to check the age ratings on games, be aware if it's a T for teen versus an M for mature and what the difference in age that means. So, um, you know, you just want to make sure that you're not uh, exposing your kids to material that you might not want. So, for example, Tomb Raider might have swearing or might have um, certain scenes that might upset your kid. 
Uh, the same is actually true of Horizon Zero Dawn. I found certain scenes very scary. So you just need to be aware of your kid, and every kid is different, and be aware of the age ratings and why a game got that rating. Is it because of language? Is it because of violence, blood, um, gore, all of those kinds of things? And just moderate what they watch accordingly, obviously. So let's just kind of make sure that's out there. But when push comes to shove, personally, I would recommend Aloy more as a role model than Lara Croft, but that's just me. I would love to hear from you about what you think as well. So please be sure to leave me a comment below and let me know which role model you like as well. You can also subscribe to me on YouTube and watch edited versions when they go live the day after. And check out the blog on borngeek.co.za where I'll also be writing this up a little bit and giving a bit more detail and insight and maybe some pictures of both characters so you can see who I'm talking about. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again on Wednesday night.